A very lovely evening to you. Many thanks for joining us to the News at 6 here on Super Screen Television. I am Precious Amayu and will begin with the report that Senate President Ahmed Lawan has approved the appointment of Baba Ghana Mohamed Aji as Chief of Staff and Festus Adedayo as a Special Advisor on Media and Publicity. According to a statement by the Special Advisor to the Senate President on Administration, Betty Okoro, the appointments are with immediate effect. Aji, who is currently an administrative coordinator of the National Health Insurance Scheme Outreach Services, holds a master's degree in educational planning and administration, and another one in public administration, both from the University of Medjugorje. And on tackling insecurity, Inspector General of Police IGP Mohamed Adamu says the crime rate in Nigeria is declining, despite reports of violent killings and kidnappings across the country. Speaking in a meeting with senior officers at the force headquarters at Abuja, the IG said the police apprehend, apprehended 424 suspected kidnappers between May 10 and June 14, 2019, with 101 persons arrested in Kaduna State. Within this context, it is noted that while there are, so, there are still isolated cases of internal security breaches, which often attract for publicity and national attention, the crime rate in recent times has been on the decline. This is in contrast to the crime record, to the crime record, the enhancement of the institutional capacity of the Nigeria police to respond to internal security threats and uh, undertake intelligence-led operations. The successes achieved are linked to Operation Pop Ada, which has been a very potent anti-crime vehicle of the Nigeria police. <coughs> Mohammed said 276 armed robbery suspects were arrested within the same period, with the highest number of 38 in Edo State, followed by 25 in Nasarawa State and 23 in the Federal Capital Territory. The highest number of 100, uh, 101 kidnapped suspects were arrested in Kaduna State, followed by Katsina State with 79, 44. 54 suspects were apprehended in Nasara State and 32 in Tarawa State. In the same vein, a total of 44 murder suspects were arrested during the period under review, with the highest number of seven in FCT, six <coughs> in Kano State. In addition, 276 armed robbery suspects were arrested within the same period with the highest number of 38 in Edo State, followed by 25 in Nasara State, and 23 in FCT. Similarly, a total of 10,860 ammunition of various descriptions and caliber were recovered, while a total of 301 firearms, 176 sus suspected cultists were arrested across the country, while 77 stolen vehicles were recovered by Operation Pop other operatives nationwide between 10th of May to 14th June 2019. The Lagos State Government is set to issue an executive order that will guarantee the safety of every child against polio. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwulu made this known during an official visit of World Health Organization WHO officials. The governor, who was represented by his deputy, Obafemi Hamzat, said the state government has concluded plans to support WHO at ensuring that polio is eradicated in the state but ensuring that every child is immunized. We must do a lot to capture our children because all the experts, the doctors have told us that between age zero and 10, if we don't get it right with the children, then we've lost them. And so part of this is what we must actually make sure we do. So the gated estates, the, my, I think the important thing is to make sure that we are able to enforce immunization in schools. We are the children, because all these little estates, they send their children to some schools. So we need to capture the private schools, but we have a lot of them in Lagos. The public schools are about, let's say 2,000, they are about, and then the private schools are about 10,000. So if we are able to capture everybody in the private schools, the, the public school is granted, but the, the, the private schools, uh, that's where we really need to. So, and, you know, we need to do what we need to do to make 
show that everybody is vaccinated. Presenting the report of the organization, the Incident Manager, Polio Operations Center Abuja, said there has not been any case of polio infection in Nigeria in the last three months. The global guidelines demand that an isolation of any form of polio virus in the environment demands an outbreak response. So, so far we've done three outbreak responses, two rounds in the entire states, including other states in the southwest of Nigeria, apart from the immediate round that we did in Maracana, Kichiwe, and Mwaka. Now, the picture there shows that uh, Nigeria is still part of the three countries that are still endemic of polio, and those other countries are Pakistan and Afghanistan. Currently, there is 29 wild polio virus cases in the world. And 21 are from uh, Pakistan, while eight are from Afghanistan. So we still, much progress has been made in Nigeria. We still don't have, in the last 33 months, any wild polio virus characters. The newly elected Speaker of Edo State House of Assembly, Frank Okie, has assumed a duty at the Assembly Complex. Okie, who addressed newsmen at the complex, thanks members and the All Progressive Congress APC for the confidence reposed in him. The Speaker said other elected lawmakers who were not at the inauguration ceremony will be inaugurated as soon as they complete their documentation processes. He also promised to work harmoniously with the State Governor to deliver the dividends of democracy to Edo people. And still on the legislative arm of government, the bill recently passed into law by Bayosa and Kanu House of Assembly that gives pension for lawmakers and governors has been condemned by Nigerians. A cross-section of Nigerians who bore their minds on the life pension law say it is a wrong step and a law that should be rejected. The citizens of Nigeria today, sort of things are not supposed to happen. Because some people, uh, some people don't have money to eat. And when... All of them, they already serve, serve as a government official, and they already get their money. Okay, after the, they're not supposed to take any pension because they are not a uniform man. This we say, um, uh, we call them political uh, this thing. So where they are leaving their office, they're supposed to leave the office with whatever they have. They're not supposed to take any entitlement at all at all. Nowhere to eat. To eat service is a problem for them. And now somebody will serve. Now say he serve as a governor. He will start taking pension. He will go for House of Assembly. He will, he will start taking money again. Which is very wrong. And it's not good, Sha. To me, it's not good. How can we call political cannot be collecting uh, pension? And we this thing we should be suffering. It's not good, it's not right. To me, it's not good. Because even though I have my dad want to collect a pension, but he was like going going up and then and then. Um, politician will just collect it easily. It's not right. Why should they be collecting life when most of the personnel are dying, queuing for the stipends they ought to collect from the from the government? Most of them don't even get it before they die. For example, look at what happened concerning the Nigeria we personnel who were just paid recently. The majority of them have died. So why should the politician be holding us to rise from? It's very, very wrong. For many, the most appropriate step is to build on different sectors of the economy. Government should make a guidelines through the PENCOM and other areas of pension uh, uh, organization to make sure the pensioners get their money. The house even need to reduce their salaries, not even collecting pension. And if they are going to collect pension, they may prorate it to years of time they use in the house. Not just uh, spending four years, five years, ten years, eight years in the house and collect pension in millions, in billions. Every civil servant every, is entitled to uh, pensions and gratuity. So if uh, I think they already had a structure before going to implement those policies, because when you are in the legislature, you are, rep you are representing the people. And from the public outcry, that shows that uh, giving politicians uh, life pensions is not the will of the people. So I think uh, that the status quo, they should just remain the status quo, whatever they were doing before that, what they should keep doing. They are the ones making this law. 
they should make the law that are favorable to the ordinary citizen. They are making laws now that are favorable to themselves, which I feel is selfish in, in nature. They should make laws that are favorable to the ordinary man and implement it. Some of the laws they make for the ordinary man, they, they, are, they are not working. So they, are own, they accelerate it, which to me is not also good enough. You recall that the Bielsa State House of Assembly had on April 25, 2019, passed a bill including its state lawmakers, both past and serving, to be among beneficiaries of the scheme, as well as Kano State House of Assembly on May 7, 2019. And in Imo State, the state governor, Emeka Ihedioha, has approved the suspension of chairman, vice chairman, councillors, and political appointees of all local governments and constituted interim manager management committees to replace them for six months. A statement signed by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Chibuike Unyoku, said directors of administration and general services of each local government have been directed to take over management, pending the confirmation of the interim management committees by the State Assembly. The Governor also approved the dissolution and removal of the Chairman and members of the Imo State Independent Electoral Commission, Imo Siek. And in Taraba State, the Taraba State government has imposed a curfew on Jalingo, the state capital, after an attack on some communities in Kona and ATC areas of the state. The senior special assistant to the governor of media and publicity, Bala Janabu, who disclosed this in a statement, said the curfew would last between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. daily until further notice. According to the statement, security agencies in the state have been directed to enforce the curfew strictly. The use of abbreviations in formal communication has been attributed to the falling standard of education in Nigeria. Concerned Nigerians who expressed this view in an interview with Superscreen also blamed teachers for the growing use of abbreviations. Abbreviation has affected our education in a negative way, in the sense that so many people don't know the full spellings. So many people do not know how to give the proper spelling. Now you want to write thanks, you see people typing T-A-N-K-S or T-A-N-S. Unconsciously, some people do it while writing exams. <laughs> okay? So I, I think we, we need to caution our, our ourselves when it comes to stuff like that. The use of abbreviation, it is wrong. Because when a, a teenager is talking to me, um, I, I still corrected someone last week. When you are talking to me, you shouldn't abbreviate. It is totally wrong. It's wrong. It is totally wrong. Even in informal, it is totally wrong when you are talking to your friend because one day you will do it to a professional, you know, client or something. So it is totally wrong. Abbreviation is totally wrong. You want to write T H I, you are writing D I S. It is wrong. The reason is because of the falling standard of education in Nigeria. Like for instance, if you're right, if you look at SMSs, people are writing on social media, you see that there is a lot of abbreviations. And some people don't even know the real spelling, so they just go with it, do you understand? And it's not really good for our society. The education system, let them have like a, uh, what's it called again, a fundamental overhauling, a complete overhaul of the whole thing system, because it's really terrible. Others posit that the abuse of social media is also responsible for the development. Well, I think it's the force of the social media. You see, because uh, now when students or all these youth, when they are sending messages, they keep on abbreviating all their sentences. Like poopy, they sell it PPA, you know, and so on and so forth. So, and it is lack of formal basic education of all these youth, as well as students. They don't read anymore. And it's our sense of values has really changed. You know, from the right thing to the to the wrong thing entirely. So that is the. So I think well, I think all things to change depends on the teachers, the parents, and the society and the federal ministry of education. I I think it's a social media. But then social media, okay. It is a platform where people could sell. You are selling what you have, okay. But then the the people have abused it, using it in a negative way. 
use it for posting stuff, writing, all sorts of things, okay? I think people should learn how to take a better advantage of the social media, okay? We should use it as a platform to educate and not to abuse things. You're still watching News at 6 on Super Screen Television. We'll take a quick break now and we'll return with business stories. Do stay with us. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us now talking business. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has released a total of 607.87 billion naira credit to selected deposit money banks to disburse for 587 agricultural projects. In its most recent economic report, the FS Bank stated that the money is under its commercial agriculture credit scheme, adding that its total of 345.06 billion naira has been repaid by beneficiaries of the scheme. The bank further noted that its agricultural credit guarantee to farmers increased by 98% within one month to 342.7 million naira. On the Agricultural Credit Guarantee Scheme, ACGS, the bank stated that the bank guaranteed a total of 342.7 million naira to 2,022 farmers in April 2019. And in the capital market, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and the Association of Capital Market Academics of Nigeria have entered into partnership to develop curriculum for capital market studies in Nigeria. The curriculum is to enable the Commission and the Association to set the required benchmark that will be adopted by the National Universities Commission in the accreditation of capital market studies in tertiary institutions. Acting Director General SEC Nero Uduk said the Commission will work with the Association to improve the standards in the Nigerian Capital Market Institute. And on the Nigerian economy, inflation rate has increased by 11.40% in May 2019, being 0.03% points higher than 11.37% rate recorded in April 2019. The Consumer Price Index CPI released by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, show that the highest increases were recorded in prices of domestic and household services, tobacco, actual and imputed rentals for housing, and medical, dental, and hospital services. The report also showed that cleaning, repair and hire of clothing, repair and hire of footwear and repair of household appliances also saw spikes in prices. One month on one month, on month, on month basis, the inflation rate increased by 1.11% in May 2019, being 0.17% percent rate higher than 0.94% recorded in April 2019. And we'll take another quick break now. We'll return with stories from the international scene and sports. Do stay with us. <laughs> 